So I've made a few videos now talking about the flaws of different power meters. And one kind of has come up more recently, but I've been asked this before. Why don't you talk about the power tap wheel? Well, from a mechanical standpoint, it's very similar in concept to a spider-based power meter. And in that, I mean, it was designed as a load cell from the start, which the first generations of power meters could do that. No one was as concerned about having the aesthetics of a crank match their bike, that they wanted the complete group set. That's now a stronger concern. When this was designed, it was truly designed as a load cell. And it's a very simple one. Um, it's a torsion load cell that's just a perfect tube. And some misalignment of gauges can cause a little bit of issues and error, but no more than on every other regular kind of design power meter. So they are designed to accentuate the forces or strain that you want and minimize the ones that you don't. So in the case of power tap, I've got a little bit of a, a legend here for these pictures um, where black area is metal structure, blue is our bearings, and you'll notice that there's an extra bearing hanging out here. We'll get to that. String gauges, um, black and, and orange, and axle in red here. So the axle being a stationary part of this. And I want to highlight that because we need to see what's kind of stationary. So the axle is stationary in, in this design. Well, based on some of the basics of string gauges, if you have a gauge at a 45 degree angle, it's called a shear gauge. But what does that really mean? If you imagine you have a tube or a structure and you're twisting it, and you can imagine it like a coil of spring, when you twist in one direction, depending on how the coil is wound, it's either kind of compressing that coil and then the coil gets bigger, or if it's wound in the other direction, it's tensioning the coil and it gets smaller. So you can look at that with a regular tube of metal. So strain is happening. That def deformation is happening on 45 degrees. And on 145, it's tensile. It's tensile. The other 45, it's compressive. So a shear gauge is just two strain gauges at 90 degrees to each other. And then they're placed on that in against that central axis. So they're 45 degrees off axis. And that's essentially the simplification of what a shear gauge really is. It's just two strain gauges at 90 degrees to each other on 45 degrees against the axle. However, as we talked about with the Look SRM Exact pedal, that is the same arrangement, but they can do different things. So when the front strain gauge wired like this, depending on how we wire the back strain gauges will either cancel shear, allowing us to measure kind of the bend force, like the, uh, the look SRM pedal, or it cancels that bend force and it measures torsion or torque. And that's how this works. So you can imagine, well, if we have a torque tube of some kind in between that free hub or the, uh, and the, the hub, that we can measure torque, but there's not a lot of area here. You get weird mechanical stress rises from the structure. So if you, you can elongate this and put a nice tube in there, yeah, you'd get a great sensor. Um, any bend or flexion, generally canceled. Only some misalignment can bring some of that back, but not a heck of a lot. However, the simple place is like, oh yeah, we just put it on, on the hub. Well, if you do that, you're only measuring the torque exiting these spokes on the far side. You're not measuring the torque exiting this. So how do you solve that? Well, what if we did have a long tube and it ran through the whole thing and then out to the flange? And that's what we've got in the power tap design. So we have our freewheel, sits on bearings, um, engages into the, uh, the one-way clutch mechanism and it goes through this tube here, and that tube sits on these bearings, but there's an outside bearing to support this exterior flange. 
So the torque goes through the center area and then out to this flange. We now can put a pair of strain gauges on this and sense this really accurately between these two areas. But we have to support this edge and that's sitting on a bearing, but that bearing doesn't actually rotate. This too, relative to this, it's like it's only moving a tiny fraction. And those bearings are essentially knuckling in into those exact same areas. So this is the only real mechanical pitfall I've ever seen with this product, is that over time, the stiction of this bearing, how much it wants to resist overcoming static friction, and even though it's only for a fraction of a time, um, it, it grows and those bearings kind of start making your power meter less usable, but mainly only inside. So what happens is as these age, they could get gunk or water ingress, they could just push the, the material, uh, the grease out, they can just, because they're knuckling in, they can eventually just wear a spot away and they don't, because they can't rotate, because they can't ever rotate, you're stuck with bearing this bearing out here not wearing well. If that bearing doesn't wear well, what starts happening is that the zero offset can kind of drift. It can get stuck. When you zero it, it could be stuck in one direction, but when you're pedaling, it comes back so it'll read high or low. And PowerTap actually has a really neat algorithm for compensating for this with their auto zeroing. Not active temperature compensation, but auto zeroing. And what happens is when it thinks, when the torque is so low, it thinks it's freewheeling. Well, if it thinks it's freewheeling and there's a difference between the offset it thinks and what that value is reading, it starts drifting it them together. It starts either it starts either increasing or decreasing the offset to match what is happening when it thinks it's freewheeling. Now it can't be a hundred percent certain of when it's freewheeling, but because when you're out on the road, all the vibrations, it really means that this bearing stiction kind of decreases and the twist, it works out perfect. So you're outside, you keep auto zero on. You will actually get worse data with these things usually when you turn auto zero off. However, when you're indoors, if you put this on a on wheel trainer, like they'll, what happens is when you coast down, you actually get negative torque because of that negative torque on that wheel from the flywheel, the bearings, all of these things are producing negative torque in that driving down section, what you end up getting is a weird negative offset. Now with that negative offset, it usually means your power drops when after a coast, but by an unpredictable amount and it doesn't really stabilize. So the only thing you really have to watch out for is if you have a wheel, you put it on a trainer indoors, turn auto zero off, manually zero it. But as these bearings age, manually zeroing indoors on a trainer becomes a real pain in the butt. So PowerTap is a really good, reliable power meter. In, I'm not going to comment in terms of their mechanical design. I'm really going to talk about the water ingress problems. I've never really had them, but I have had these bearings go out on me many times. And it's kind of the, the main flaw. They suggest if you need that service to send it in, they'll put a new one in and recalibrate it and all sorts of stuff. So kind of like the SRM maintenance model, but having to do with a weird item that a user can't easily replace. So in terms of competitiveness, these are effectively a bare bones, no feature power meter. They've got a little bit of analysis in it now to kind of give you cadence. Uh, but if you ever want to trip that up and show how it works for yourself, just pedal with one leg and it'll half your cadence. So it's uh, a little interesting looking for two peaks. But uh, it only updates on every 1.25 seconds on a time interval, not a rotation interval. And that kind of hurts it because it means it's the slowest updating power meter out there and actually produces less data points than you're recording. The only other issues I've really found is, is if you're a Campagnolo user like myself, it is stupid hard to find these hubs um, for the Campagnolo stuff because I think they've stopped making them. 
your 11 and 12 tooth cassettes, I have seen these things cut halfway through through them. It's, it's quite ridiculous. The material is kind of soft, like everyone using aluminum, but um, I've seen it as particularly bad on the power tap wheels. But other than that, no major mechanical flaws. So I'm probably going to be running a little late on videos like I am now. Um, I haven't been perfectly consistent anyway, but this time uh, it's more, I've been getting further with the fan controller. So yes, uh, wrong colored housing, manually made holes and stuff, but it functions. And there's still a lot of work to do. I got my circuit boards. I've built up a whole bunch of these so far. Um, it's great to have your own facilities in your own office to do those kind of things so you don't have to outsource them and wait weeks and weeks and weeks. Which is one of the things that I've tried to avoid with things like Kickstarters because so many of those companies don't have the expertise to do the things. I'm experiencing the other problem now where I'm so swamped with things to do that it's interfering with e trying to get, do updates and uh, connecting with people. So. Uh, bear with me a little while. There should be a mailer for this guy in a little bit telling you how to buy the beta units. And uh, with that, yeah, thanks for watching.